There we go. All right, guys and gals, <clears throat> welcome to the new class of the summer term 2023. ELNC 1013, 23 summer network cabling. All right, we're going to have some fun with this, this class when I untangle myself. <clears throat> And today I'm going to introduce you to the idea of what this whole thing is all about. Uh, I'm pretty sure most of us or all of us have some idea, but uh, today we're going to just uh, take a little deeper dive uh, as far as what this whole thing is about, and I'm going to introduce this course to you. I assume that everybody can navigate to the, let me just make myself look like a student, I assume also that you can see my screen and my mouse moving here. So if you go to the content, well, first, uh, the class portal, I have posted the, mm, excuse me, <clears throat> I have posted the lab schedule. So please verify it. There was one uh, error that I have uh, made and I corrected that because uh, I listed somebody twice. <laughs> uh, as far as all the other stuff, we should be okay so far. So the way this works, and I'm gonna mute you there. <laughs> right. Um, so the way this works is that uh, here are the sections, section one, two, and three, and uh, you can just find out which subsections you are, and the labs, the so lab one, there is no division in subsections because the lab one, uh, lab one is supposed to be done at home. So we're good with that. Uh, <clears throat> now, weeks, all right, week three and four, that's gonna be lab two and three, and labs two and three are going to be done um during one lab session so during those two hours i have chosen the labs i have arranged those labs in a way that the two labs can be done in one session and if there is a longer lab like for example uh, where is it <clears throat> lab six all right it's just going to be that one lab uh during the because it's a longer lab same as lab seven i will it, when we go along when we cross that bridge you will see what i mean all right so i just also kind of colorized the schedule here so here is a color for one lab session and week three i'm going to only see uh subsections a so uh whatever you schedule whenever you're scheduled for the lab uh, and if you're subsection A, then that week you join the lab. Now, uh, week four is going to be just subsections B and so on. And if uh, I hope that the, this thing makes sense. And if it doesn't, just let me know and I will... Uh, uh, I'll help you out. Uh, when doing two labs in one class, do we need to complete the deliverables? Yes, two deliverables. Every lab is a separate entity. So if you do two labs, you complete two lab documentations. I am not on the list. Should I just come to first? <laughs> ah, all right. I'm going to find you. Uh, let me just... Uh, write it down here so I don't forget. All right, Zach, sorry about that. Uh, I must have missed you. You must have been wearing the invisible clothes, just like the king with the invisible clothes. And never mind. Uh, all right. Um, yeah, so if you see, <laughs> right, so if you see, uh, yeah, if anybody can see that, uh, so this is the time to correct those things. That's why I, was, uh, um, I have the first lab uh, done the way I, uh, I'm doing it, all right? Okay, so that's uh, also, we have a new playlist, uh, and this video also is going to be posted on this playlist that we, are, that we have. And here's a welcome thing. That's a very important note right there. Now, as far as the content and the labs, so content, am I still like a student? Yeah, I've, I've 
appear so uh here is oh, i'm just going to collapse that if you go to table of contents in the content and you see the student items expand that so here's labs here are labs now uh, <clears throat> lab one is already posted so just follow the instructions there then there's that sub module there are subfolder this is blank work orders that's where they live work order one that's going to be the one for pretty much all of the labs except that one for coaxial cable right so if you click on that you're going to see those blank work orders all right and you can download them print them just bring them to class Right. Okay, so that's as far as uh, some logistics that have to do with this, uh, with the FOL navigation. You should be, you should be fine by now. So I'm going to touch my mic to position a little bit. There we go. All right. <laughs> All right. So let's get to the. Um, our class so our class today is introduction to telecommunications let's see if uh, from the beginning i'm afraid to press the f keys all right introduction to telecommunications and uh, let's see what some of the um, earlier version of communications what can you think they would be was it uh, people drumming drums? Was it people uh, sending smoke signals? Uh, was it people waving hands? Was it people sending pigeons? Uh, as long as humanity lives, we always tried to communicate with each other in some sort of way. Now, there's no problem if we're standing beside each other so we can hear um, ourselves talking. Uh, which one do, okay, sorry, I'm just looking at the chat here. Uh, which one do we fill out for lab one? Yeah, the the, the work order one. Uh, so, <clears throat> but also humans are such kind of a beast that uh, we always try to improve things and sometimes it works for us and sometimes not so much, but for the most part, uh, we are trying to make things more efficient and more comfortable um, as we go along and communications is, Part of it. So this is one of the earlier forms of communications. Can I do this? Uh, there we go. Does anybody know who that is? This was one of the earlier, and that was a long, long time ago. It happened sometime in 1970s, right? That was a long time ago. This was form of a communication. What is a communication? All right. Communication is, go on. Com well, communication, telecommunication. What's telecommunication? Tele, the tele part is communicating over a distance. Wow, you see, you just learned something. All right, what will be the means of communicating that we are using uh, today aside from sending a pigeon? Well, some of our most common ways of communicating or telecommunicating would be well email uh, that's uh, that's pretty standard way of communicating it fax now that still is in uh, in use as although not as much uh, there was a time in 90s that eh, almost everyone would have a fax machine at their home because uh, you know that was that would be the way to communicate and now rarely anybody has a fax machine and if there is one somewhere in some corporate office then you get a really good 50 50 chance that this thing actually works uh because when i try to send some faxes in with, from some company's offices uh, it looked like it went through but uh but then two days later uh it said no it didn't and it spat out the sheet uh for everyone to see so everyone saw what i was faxing except me well i i knew that but yeah uh, so, but uh, that's uh, that's one way of communicating. Pots and VoIP. We'll come back to that in a second. Video conferencing. That's uh, well, you know what? This is uh, this is one of the ways. I'm just trying to get rid of my glare here. Um, 
this has become after 2019 when COVID hit uh, the world, that video conferencing took off really, really uh, uh, well, and it's just uh, that's, that's also becoming the becoming the standard way of communicating. Radio, television, internet, intranet, and many, many others. Uh, it, the difference between internet and intranet. Internet, we know this is the World Wide Web that basically uh, well, covers the whole world. Uh, intranet is almost like a World Wide Web, but it's not. It's a miniature, mini, mini version of a web that is contained within a certain building and certain company or something like that. All right, so uh, uh, they had to call it something else. So we are intranet. All right, now parts and VoIP. Parts stands for plain old telephone service it's actually the official name of that uh, uh, of that way of communicating and it is the telephone in the most basic form it's a telephone line with one pair um, uh, well I'm just going to mention that it's, uh, it, it contains ring and tip and we will talk about that uh, in further presentations for their classes what tip and ring means but basically it's one pair of wires per one conversation one physical pair of wires per conversation that's pots plain old telephone service now this service is being pried out uh, with something that's called a voip and voip stands voice over ip hmm? or voice over internet protocol okay uh, so we're going to talk about two of those uh, as we go along we are not going well we're not going to take apart any of much of that maybe some internet and intranet uh, well land is a form of intranet uh, okay but these are the some some of the examples uh, that um, uh, that we're using for today's communications okay let's go next all right let's take a look at some communication system essential parts if you look at any kind of a system that plugs something into something and that something has to be processed in some sort of way and then it has to be spat out on the other end uh, in some sort of form you're going to find well, pretty much those basic elements, all right? So, starting from the left, contestant number one, we got something that's called the input transducer. We will talk about what that is, what transducer means, all right? So, then we have something that is called a transmitter because the signal has to hit the transducer. Transducer hands that over to the transmitter. Transmitter does what it does, and it has to shoot it out somewhere so something else can receive it and uh, the receiver is going to receive that transmitted signal and it's going to do its own processing so the signal is understood by uh, whoever wants whoever needs to understand the signal is it a human on the other end it is going to require a certain type of transducer uh, or is it another machine on the other end that is going to also require a certain other type of transducer in order for the signal to be understood? So at this end here, we have a signal. And at this end here, we also have a signal, but maybe a little bit stronger. So we're going to take a look at some of the some of these in details. Uh, and as you go along, you're going to keep recognizing those in many, many systems. All right, transducer. What is a transducer? A transducer is a device that converts energy from one form to another. Right? Examples of that would be a microphone. This little guy right here, I'm going to tap on it, all right? Uh, it converts sound waves, something that's called longitudinal sound waves, um, into electrical energy. And then it goes through all that 
process of wires and devices, it, it is basically ending up in your ear through some sort of an output transducer. Now, it could be headphones, it could be loudspeaker. Loudspeaker is just another name or the proper name for a speaker, because speaker could mean something else. Loudspeaker is the device that vibrates and makes sound, mechanical device. Usually they are round, all right? So um, another one here, oh, well, loudspeaker converts electrical energy into sound waves, yeah. transducer. That's the idea of transducer. Another example will be well, antenna. It converts electrical energy into electromagnetic waves. Mm. And vice versa. It can detect electromagnetic waves and convert them into electrical energy. So antenna would be a bidirectional device. Now, technically, if you really want to try, those two, uh, microphone and the loudspeaker, they are also bi-directional devices. A loudspeaker, believe it or not, it can be used as a microphone. In fact, in all those school PA systems, as you remember, uh, there will be that speaker on the sidewall somewhere in the classroom, and sometimes the main office would call in and have a conversation with the teacher who was in the classroom. Right? Now, it was... It was bi-directional communication. However, it was one way, uh, well, kind of like a half duplex communication because uh, it could only be transmitted in those specific PA uh, systems. The sound can be transmitted only one way. You could either talk or you could either, or you could listen. Now, who talks and who listens was controlled by the main office with the push to talk button. And when the push to talk button was pressed, the receptionist could speak to the classroom. And when the receptionist released that button, the communication uh, turned the other way and the loudspeaker was used as a microphone. There was not a separate microphone in that classroom station. Right? Also, if you get some a uh, cheap microphone, or maybe not so cheap. Uh, it has to be dynamic microphone, cannot be the condenser microphone because they work a little bit different. But if you get that something that's called a dynamic microphone, and if you wire it in, if you plug it into a headphone output of some device, and you put that microphone to your ear, yes, you're going to hear the sound coming through that little membrane of the microphone. However, the main idea of the microphone is to convert sound into electrical energy, so it works better that way. It's dominant in that way. Okay? Now, the properties of the loudspeaker are dominant the other way. Uh, it basically likes to convert electrical energy into sound waves. It's more efficient. The way it's made, it's more efficient to do just that. All right, All right. Let's, uh, let's keep going. We go into something like the signal processor and or transmitter. Quite often, they are in the same box, right? Now, it could be applied as a system or it could be applied individually. We'll, we'll expand on that a little later. I know I keep saying that. Promises, promises. All right, depending on the purpose and circumstances. Well, let's take a look at some of that. Here's a little tiny bit of an audio mixing console. What's the purpose of that? It collects multiple signals and combines them into a single output of or common groups. This one, well, uh, mostly it's going to combine those two channels or maybe those three channels here into one common output channel. And maybe another group of it would be something that's called a tape output or another group would be a headphone output, okay? <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> Hmm. Now there's some larger mixing boards that can uh, that can accommodate maybe uh, well 24 channels, uh, 48 channels, and whatnot, and they can combine them into a single output, or maybe they can also some of those channels can be combined into groups of channels. So whoever is in audio business, uh, uh, that is uh, that's a quite uh, quite useful feature. So, audio mixing console, it's a signal processor. Not necessarily a transmitter, but technically you could call it a transmitter because it is going to transmit the signal out into something else, like 
maybe an amplifier or maybe a distribution amplifier and that distribution amplifier is going to distribute the signal to different amplifiers and so on. So yeah, I could, if somebody's really stubborn, you could call it a transmitter. Right? Now, um, another one here would be a radio transmitter. Here is a good old radio transmitter. It generates, well, it takes the sound waves through a transducer, which is a microphone, look at that. That microphone has a link that goes into the radio and that radio transceiver uh, could be, transceiver is transmitter and receiver in one word, combined into one word. And that thing can transmit uh, the uh, radio frequencies to the antenna, which is also a transducer. Trans transducer all right now uh third contestant right here is you i'm pretty sure you see these things all over the place it's a wap wap wireless access point it's the wi-fi thing and they're all over the place in well in our school as well and uh, i think the ones that we have are actually made by cisco right uh, so it generates wireless digital signals into computer networking applications. And it's also bi-directional because it can receive signals from your cell phone if you're logged into our system. And it can also, excuse me, <clears throat> it can also send signals to your cell phone, laptop, tablet, or whatever wireless device that you're using and able to log into our school, so-called Wi-Fi. Right? Uh, okay, transmission link. We're going to spend some time on that during our class, uh, during the next 14 weeks. Um, the transmission links, well, it's a transfer, signal transfer medium. What type of a medium is it? What do you mean medium? Is it somebody who's going to talk to your dead relatives? No, it's a medium which basically it's an environment for the signal to travel through. Uh, all right. We distinguish, well, basically we distinguish three types of mediums, mediums uh, that we use mostly. One will be the air, one will be the copper and fiber, air, copper or fiber. Okay. Air, well, you receive the signal from the air when you're driving your car and listening to your radio. The signal has to come from something. So it comes from the air. Antenna receives it and processes that, right? Copper. Well, um, it's probably most popular means of signal transportation. Um, it's used widely all over. I don't think I have to explain that. And uh, now the third contestant on this page here would be the optical fiber. So uh, those, the fiber optics are becoming way, way more popular than they ever were. Uh, they used to be well, quite popular, but not towards the consumer uh, kind of a level. Now they are becoming really, really uh, frequently used on the consumer level as well. So we study three, well, we study copper and the fiber for the most part in this class. And then there's the receiver uh, function is, you know, the function of the receiver is to process the output signal. So it could be understood by whoever needs to receive that signal. And the example would be a radio receiver Audio amplifier, it's also a receiver. Uh, um, and uh, wireless access point. See, it's, I mentioned it twice because it is bidirectional. Cool. Well, enough for this page. Um, now, here's a little picture of a system. Instead of applying things individually, I can apply them as a system. All right. So, what do we have here? Well, we have a mixing board. It's a little bit more than two channels. 
it's a basic sound system that receives a signal from different sources, not just microphones, it receives signals from different sources. Now, within the huge system, you can see the whole diagram that I just showed you. So when you download this uh, presentation, and if you really, really are looking for something extremely interesting to do, then just read my post-it notes. There you go. Uh, uh, now, within that, you can see the elements of that diagram, but you could see some of sort of like, so to speak, mini worlds that contain the miniature version of the diagram within the big picture of the diagram. Woo. Uh, so like, for example, here we have a transducer, a link, a processor, transmitter, and then there's another receiver and it transmits that to the loudspeakers. All right, wow. Now, over here, we have a couple of wireless microphones and they have that mini uh, environment within themselves before they shoot the signal to be transmitted, uh, shoot the signal through the link to the mixing board. Because look, here is a microphone, which is transducer. It's, you can't see it, but you plug that into the so-called belt pack and uh, that is wired. And then the belt pack has a processing circuitry that shoots the signal out into the receiver through the air. And the receiver can be somewhere where the mixing console is, could be on the other side of the room. That's the idea of a wireless microphone right? and uh, so on. Now, we're going to also concentrate on that. Uh, we're going to spend a full lecture on what the distributed audio is because this is the part of that here. 70 volt system, distributed audio. Now, um, just by looking at this, can anyone, uh, can anyone tell what kind of a system it could possibly be. So think about it. And I'm going to look at some of the chat lines because I don't want to ignore you because I'm really, really trying to uh, make myself look like a nice guy. There you go. <laughs> uh, is it similar to a motor that can be a generator? Uh, uh, okay, so you're looking at the... Um, by directionability of the devices. Yeah, you know, philosophically it would be, uh, it, it, there is some sort of connection there. Yeah, a, a motor can be used as a generator or a transducer could be used one or the other ways. Microphone can be used as a speaker if you want or a loudspeaker or a loudspeaker can be used as a microphone. Yeah, that's the same idea. And you know what, in both of them, here it is. In both of them, magnetism is involved. There we go. <laughs> uh, I have a condenser mic that requires phantom voltage. Is that relevant here? Yes, it is. Um, phantom voltage or phantom power, that's called. Usually it's like 48 volts DC that is required to power up the circuitry of a condenser microphone. Yes. Um, yeah. So... Most of them, well, most of the mixers are, are equipped with the phantom power button because if you don't need to use the phantom power, if you just have the dynamic microphones, yeah, well, you can just leave that thing off. But uh, condenser mics uh, are, well, they are known for better quality sound, if you can say it that way. They're quieter, they're more clear, but uh, they are not really of a good use on the rock and roll stage because there's just too much noise that they you know, they're just too fragile for that type of stuff they're really good studio mics in fact this is a condenser mic that i am using and it has to be powered but it's a different condenser mic uh it's it's, it's plugged into the usb so it's all kind of it's, it's all different kind of uh a different animal yet right um So, uh, yeah, because the condenser microphone is using a capacitor, because capacitor used to be called condenser. So capacitors used to be called condensers, and then the nomenclature in, evolved into calling them capacitors. That's when it comes to 
English language. In some other languages, it's still, you know, whatever it is. But um, mm, the way co the condenser mic works is that the capacitor, which is the, um, the main um, element of the condenser mic, is vibrating with the vibrations of the um, of the air according to the sound that's present in the air. Now, when the condenser or capacitor vibrates, it the plates of the capacitor or condenser are becoming closer and further apart. And we know by studying capacitors, the capacitance will change depending on the distance between the plates. So there you go. So the capacitance changes, its impedance changes. So all you have to do is apply some circuitry that can sense that uh, and convert that into electrical power, in electrical signal. But that, uh, that circuitry has to be powered. So that's why. Now, anybody guess what kind of a system this would be? No guesses. What do we have? We have the distribution amplifier, not distribution amplifier. Recording studio, that's a good guess. Thank you for being brave. Mm, you could use it as a recording studio if you really want to, but that's not the main purpose of this one. That's a monitoring setup concert. It could be sort of, yeah, well, like a school PA system. All right, here's the thing. I'm going to uh, sound system for a stage. There you go. Jacob's get, Jacob gets the, Jacob takes the cake here. It's a church system, basically a church system. What's a dead giveaway? Well, uh, these choir mics and these two belt packs. Right? It's a relatively small, uh, to medium size, uh, church system um, that can be, uh, yeah, there you go, choir. <laughs> All right, now um, there's way, there's a whole science of installing sound systems in churches. And if somebody is interested, I have done it for many years um, all over pretty much Southern Ontario. Uh, there was a time that if there was a church, I probably have been in it uh, to either uh, give a quote or, uh, or do some job uh, some years ago. Uh, it's 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 a pretty good business. Plus, it's um, well, I found it extremely fascinating to do that kind of stuff. Nice. Right, let's keep going here. All right, structured cabling. We keep talking about the structured cabling, network cabling, structured cabling. They are sort of the same thing. Now, as I traveled along with the traveling group that had to do with installations and whatnot. Long time ago, I sometimes I would take a picture. Uh, I would have to take pictures uh, in order to show them what I'm up against and uh, show them, show my office that I was reporting to and whatnot. So sometimes you're going to uh, find yourself in a situation that you get called in for a service call and you're going to see something like that. This was one of the Tim Horton locations, Summer Toronto downtown. I said, you know, so they, they called me, the office called me, said, there's a, you know, can you, uh, can you go and sort out some telephone lines in uh, Tim Hortons? I couldn't find a Tim Hortons because nobody told me that the Tim Hortons was under construction. It was, you can tell what kind of construction that is. And I couldn't see, so it took me a while to find that place. And then once I get there, once I got there, so well, what do you want me to sort out? There's nothing to sort out. So sometimes you're going to see something that, you no, know, what do we have here? It's a big block frame. We are going to terminate one of those. That's when we talk about the 25 pair uh, cable. And there's one right here, 25 pair cable that goes right into the big frame. And there are some lines that are coming out of that that have to go somewhere else. Uh, now, of course, I don't know when, when I saw this kind of stuff, I just said, look, I know, call me when you're ready <laughs> to actually do something because now we're just ripping things apart. And sometimes you're going to see um, equipment racks like this. Uh, now, this, believe it or not, this is a doable project. All you have to do is make sure that uh, things are connected, the lights are up, and then uh, it, it can take you an hour or so to 
basically make sense out of that and put it nice and neat, maybe two hours, maybe three hours sometimes. Right? So this kind of stuff uh, you can expect to see in this type of job, but that's not all. It's, these are the rare, the, some extreme cases that... Uh, uh, now, when it comes to... So that was mostly the telephony and some of the hardwire or hardware that has to do with networking. Right? Now, here is data. This is a big system. Uh, this probably would take about a month or so to complete, or maybe two months, depending, because uh, sometimes it's not just you, you just go in and do your stuff. Sometimes you're being stopped by other trades um, and whatnot. So these are all data wires, and this would be something that's called a field wiring. Field wiring that is terminated at the patch panels right here. And each an individual wire goes somewhere to a wall location or a desktop or underneath the counter or something like that. It is connected, well, it's meant to be connected to some sort of a smart device, such as printer, wireless access point, a PC, a laptop, or sometimes uh, things that have to do with the climate control or whatnot. But this would be mostly like a computer network here. I can see that somebody used different colors of wires. Maybe some of the wires go to the west end of some building and the other ones go to the east side of the building. Who knows? Or some of them could be used for, um, uh, for um, plugging a PC and some of them could be used to plug in a VoIP telephone just to distinguish between those two. And of course, there's all kinds of equipment that's involved uh, with that. So this would be floor mounted racks, 19 inch standard racks. And um, it, uh, this would uh, take some skill to, uh, to, to organize it in a way that is as neat as that. Well, some people say, oh, this is not neat enough. Okay, you know what? I think this is neat enough. Can you do it better? Can, can this thing be done um, immaculately beautiful? Yes, but uh, where do you stop calling work work and start calling it art? That's a fine, uh, fine line here, right? So this here is, um, is functional. I don't know where it's from. I just got this thing from, from the internet here somewhere. Uh, but uh, I would consider this thing as a nice, reliable, functional system. All right. What is in Vault? I got this thing. You don't see it, but I see it, and it's bothering me, and I can't move it. All right. I hope nothing happened to anybody when I click on that thing. Uh, all right. Uh, systems. What is involved in this whole network cabling business. Data infrastructure, which is the last picture that we just saw, that's a huge part of it. Telephony, yes. Now, telephony's, telephony changes its form uh, ever since it was invented. Now we are into the VoIP stage of telephone systems. However, some of them, what I call conventional systems, are still in use, and it's a good idea to know how to service them. Or it's a good idea to know how they work so you can switch them over to VoIP. Right? I'll kind of get your foot in the door as far as the, as far as the uh, knowledge uh, when it comes to do that. Uh, then later on, if you find yourself a job somewhere, you're going to learn the rest of it uh, as you go and work along. CCTV, closed circuit television. Um, some of the most popular CCTVs would be the TV network in high schools. Well, there will be a broadcasting class and they will be broadcasting every Friday with their school news. So that will be called closed circuit television system. Also, CCTV can uh, be pulled up to something that's called security surveillance. So basically those, those security cameras, security alarms, nurse call systems, fire alarms, PA, commercial public address, PA systems, commercial simple all call. Uh, so, you know, there's a fire, get out, you know, that kind of stuff. Uh, or there's, you know, there's no fire, it's just a drill, that kind of stuff can be communicated. Uh, or so-and-so, line three, please pick up your phone. 
Um, so that would be an all call type of a PA system. Uh, PA sound systems, now that goes into various different uh, branches. Uh, you can have a stage PA system, you can have a church PA system, you can have a theater PA system, you can have a, um, arenas, uh, just a regular 70 volt audio distributing system. Okay, before I stop, before I start, start talking like Forrest Gump about the shrimp soup, uh, PA system branch off to various different kinds. Uh, now, um, access control, we'll talk about that a little bit. And retail, that's a huge thing. Uh, installing communication systems in retail business. Now, what do you need to be able to do that kind of stuff, right? You need the working knowledge. Now, don't be intimidated by this statement, this first statement right here. You do get your working knowledge. I'm going to start you up on this. I'm going to point you to the direction if you want to learn more. Um, I might even show you how to start up your own business in this kind of business if you, uh, if you really want to. Um, where do you get the working knowledge of a system? Let's say there is a certain type of a nurse call system. Let's say there's a certain type of uh, access control system or a, or a security alarm. Well, there's that mysterious box. Everybody knows how to enter a code, four-digit codes, and you just have to know that code, and this thing arms and this arms. But how do you set it up? How do you program that? Well, um, I'll tell you how you learn this kind of stuff. If you work for a company who does that, or, excuse me, or if you have your own business that has to do with this type of business, then you have contacts with different kinds of distributor companies, distribution companies that are selling that to other companies who are installing that. Now, once you're on the email list of your distributor, and you will be on the email list uh, of the distributor because you're registered with them as their client, because the distributors uh, quite often don't sell to public, they sell to businesses. And once in a while, somebody from so-and-so company is going to be in the area or, you know, and he's going to, he, and, that, and that person is going to present some sort of a system. We have a new system that came out. Let me introduce that to you. So they get a bunch of technicians from a bunch of different companies in the room, and they're going to fill them with coffee and donuts and sandwiches, and they're going to spend the whole day introducing the system, how to set it up, how to program it, how to connect things and whatnot. Sometimes, periodically, they do seminars on systems that are already in existence because they realize that uh, to the companies, some people leave the companies, some new people are coming in, there's a whole rotation thing, and they want to keep the sales going. So it's in the manufacturer's interest to educate um, people who are using or installing those, uh, those systems to be educated, because if you know how to set it up, you're going to buy it, right? So... Don't be too intimidated in that. Uh, once you get yourself into this kind of world, you will see how they actually feed you the information and the knowledge, and quite often for free because it's in their interest because they want to sell things. Right? Uh, now, you need to know how to install things. That's sometimes longer process than it is not. Uh, you need to know how to run wires, how to install wires. I will start you up on that. You need to know how to set up the systems. You need to know how to commission and service. Service is if something wrong happens with the system, then you just go and fix it. What's a commissioning? A commissioning is that once you install some sort of a complicated, let's say, phone system or access control system or nurse call system or whatnot, and it's a big company, and they need to know how to use it. So after getting dirty, crawling under the floors, uh, you know, climbing the ceilings and whatnot, uh, nice, tired, and sweaty job. Then one day you get to put on a shirt and tie and go in front of people and tell them how it works, how they can use it. Right? So that's commissioning. Right? Design and sales. Well, some people like to install things. And some people like to design things and some people like to sell things. So this is also part of that. If, if you want to, if you're, if you find that 
call within you that you want to do one or these one or more of these type of work, then some people are better than others in certain type of things. So that's basically the scope of, uh, well, in a nutshell, as far as uh, what's involved in what kind of systems you might be uh, dealing with. All right. Uh, data. Let's talk about data. It's the bread and butter of the communications right now. Even if you're not installing computer networks, you're still going to have to know how to terminate a wire, how to um, how to run the wire, the do's and don'ts on what kind of cable you're going to have to use, how it has to be. It's very useful knowledge right now. You can use it to make money, to work for a company or for yourself and actually um, get paid for doing this. Or you can use that knowledge uh, if you need to manipulate some sort of equipment that you own uh, at your home, right? But this, but this is right now, um, we're coming to the time of our human development that you can it just can't escape that. So it's a good idea to know how to do certain things like that. Right? Telephony. Uh, telephony. We are going to talk about the conventional telephone systems. We're going to talk about what, what I call them a conventional telephone system. And then we're going to talk about VoIP telephone systems. And we're going to talk about POTS, which is plain old telephone service. And we're going to talk about how those things can be combined to serve the client the best. Because if client sees that, yeah, it's for them, well, they're going to buy it from you. And if they buy it from you, then that's how you make money. CCTV and surveillance, very widely. Uh, the, most, pretty much most of those things that I'm showing you right now, you can concentrate on just doing that and you can make a career out of it. So CCTV, CCTV, CCTV <laughs> closed circuit television system and surveillance, they go pair in pair. Now, they can go big as big corporate systems like that. Uh, what you can see on the bottom picture right here is a monitoring station for you know, some sort of a city. Uh, or you can have miniature systems for small business or your home. Security alarms, also quite lucrative business. Uh, Security systems, you make money two ways. One is uh, doing the installations. And the other way of making money installing security systems is creating yourself a residual income. But if somebody is interested in that kind of stuff, talk to me in person when we're in class and I'll fill you, fill you up, I'll fill you in, fill in, well, I'll fill you in the details if you're really serious about, uh, if you're really serious about doing uh, that kind of work. Nurse call systems, what, a ner what are nurse call systems? Well, hopefully it's not too often that you're going to visit a hospital or hopefully maybe never. Well, I visited once or twice. Uh, first time was when I was born and already I was visiting the hospital because I was there. <laughs> All right, never mind. Uh, so uh, <clears throat> uh, nurse call systems are those little buttons that are by your bed and then you press the button and um, you know, the nurse shows up. Is it happening by magic? No, some of them are quite sophisticated computer systems uh, that are, um, well, are involved in this kind of business here. So what do we have here? We have some pull stations. Here's a pull station right, with a little cord on it. And some of those are being installed in hospitals or in nursing homes. Uh, they could be installed in a living room by the couch. They could be installed in the bathroom. Uh, in, in nursing homes, if somebody needs assistance, uh, then uh, we have push buttons or bed stations. This would be a bed station by the hospital bed. And there will be a cord with the, well, some, let's call it pillow speaker, or sometimes uh, this, the microphone and the speaker are, are, are in this bed station right here. Um, there are something that's called presence stations. Different systems have this thing, you know, so we have different 
coded color color coded buttons so for example if a nurse um, enters the room so the nurse is in that room uh, then the nurse can press one of these buttons so yeah i'm present in that room and in the hallway above the door certain light is going to appear so well, if the doctor walks in or somebody, whatever, uh, they, they can just say, oh, well, in that room, there's a nurse. Right? Uh, so this is, this is also a big business um, and it's evolving all the time and it to, needs to be serviced as, as well. Fire alarms. Fire alarms need additional licensing. If you are interested in fire alarm business, also talk to me. I'm going to point you in the right direction. In our college, we do offer fire alarm or fire uh, education. Yeah, if you can call it that way. And that's all I'm going to say about that. They're similar, they're very similar to security systems, but not quite, all right? Simply because you also need some additional electrical license in order to, uh, uh, to install those, or you need just a fire license in order to maintain them troubleshoot them, design them, and, um, well, annual inspections are, are big on that. Fire business is a big business. It's the paradox of things. You want this thing to be the best you can possibly have, but you never want that to work. No. All right. School PA systems. Who remembers those little gadgets here? This is, uh, you know, almost ancient history but maybe in some of those schools still is, is being implemented uh well school pa system this would live in the reception main reception and then in the reception needs, needs to talk to the sort of classrooms they're just flipping one of those switches and make a connection with the classroom if they want to do an all call they press an all call button and they page the whole school now those evolved into something like this here. So instead of having all that big honking furniture on that uh, uh, on your uh, on your desk taking up space, you can just have one of those units that looks like a phone, and that's how the PA system works. On the display, it shows which classroom is calling, and you can have different features. You can do all call page, you can do zone page. Uh, or you can call individual classroom on, on this one here. And also these can have the bells programmed into them. Uh, so the, the school bells are ringing uh, well, at certain times. So uh, yeah, it's also pretty good business uh, as well. Church PA, church PA. Um, I would say when I just when I did that for some years, I was fascinated. Uh, I just loved to walk into a church and assess the situation and designing a system that would work in this specific room, this specific shape of a room. And churches have many different shapes. And I was just uh, it just was happening for me. Right? I, I, I like doing it. I knew how to do that. If somebody is interested in that kind of business, talk to me as well. What can we see here on this picture? Looks like also a school PA, church PA system. It's not just a spoken word. It's also a quite often church organ business. Uh, you can tell that this is probably the back of the church. And over here, you can see something that's called, see those windows, the window looking like things here. These are cavities. Behind that, there's a room. There is a room, empty room that is to be filled with speakers, loudspeakers. This is acoustic cloth that is not supposed to let the light through, but the sound is coming through nice. So there's one here, there's one here, here, and here. These are called the tone chambers. What's the idea of a tone chamber? A tone chamber is a chamber that physically mixes sound. Uh, the idea of a pipe organ is that the sound from a pipe comes out in 360 degrees all around the pipe it develops right? well speaker just loudspeaker is directional but if you put a bunch of speakers on the floor here and point them on all different directions you're going to have a similar effect as if the sound was coming out of the pipe and with today's technology with sampling and whatnot 
it is actually extremely hard for even a trained ear to distinguish if the whole thing is covered, whether the organ that is being played, is it electronic or is it true pipe organ? Okay. So that's uh, uh, how good is that business? Well, those things are not being sold for $30,000. Those things are not being sold for $40,000. They're being sold for much more. Spoken word. We'll talk about that a little bit sometime. Uh, all I can say here is there's a speaker, there's a listener. I'm just kind of putting the seed in the back of your mind. I'm trying to get you interested in that kind of stuff. Uh, if this if this sings to you, if this uh, if this appeals to you, talk to me. I'll point you in the right direction. There's a speaker. That speaker produces sound with uh, with with his or her mouth that sound travels physically to the listening listener's ear there's a loudspeaker it also produces sounds that is taken from the microphone here those two sound waves are getting to the listener's ear a little slightly different times so sometimes time alignment is required that's all i'm going to say about uh about this also if you want to if you're going to set this thing up properly in a church, the idea is that the listener thinks that all the sound that they listen to is coming from the speaker's mouth. And they know that there's a sound system if somebody turns it off and things are becoming a little bit quiet. So that's a properly set up sound system for a church. Distributed audio. Now, uh, this is four minutes to three o'clock. Uh, um, maybe some of you guys uh, have to go to another class. So please, by all means, go. I'm going to post that on YouTube and you can catch the rest of it. I just got a couple minutes to finish. Uh, distributed audio. Uh, what if you go on all restaurants or fast food places or, or, well, venues like that? You're going to see a bunch of oh, schools, for example. You're going to see a bunch of speakers in the ceiling. Let's say these are speakers. Okay, let's pretend these are speakers. Um, they are installed in certain type, certain way. The, the installation of that kind of system is different than the home stereo you would uh, you would connect. <clears throat> Excuse me. It is sip coffee. Talking too much. It is different from the stage gear. If you want to do a mix, a rock and roll kind of a band, it's different from the theatrical type of. I'm going to show you some of that, and we're going to have a lab connecting some of those in uh, in our uh, in our lab room. Lab room. Uh, stage audio, big business as well. We have Stratford not too far from from us. If you can ever get yourself a job working for Stratford, you're nicely set. Well, I'm gonna say access control. Access control are the um, proximity readers that sense either a access card or a key fob or whatever has that chip that responds to the proximity reader being used everywhere all the time. In fact, I'm pretty sure there's a few million people in this whole world that are using it at the time that I sp I'm speaking. Never mind. Uh, quite often is it's very popular. These systems are very popular for uh, within the real estate agencies. Mm -hmm. uh, how they work is that well, real estate agencies they employ many many people, uh, and sometimes they have a small type of a building or much smaller that they couldn't fit all the people in there. So the traffic is there as far as the employees or employer and employees. Uh, so let's say a company hires 200 people and they have one building and everybody's got the key because they need to get into the office whenever they need. Or well, what happens if somebody leaves and they don't want that person to have access to that building anymore. And if you have normal keys, what do you do? Change the locks and make a copy of that key for the other 200 people and then maybe next week somebody else leaves so well it's not a very convenient situation is it but if you have the access control system with the uh, if somebody leaves they just 
deactivate their cards so they can get in them. So, well, that's access control in a nutshell. And this is the last slide for today. Retail is a big business when it comes pretty much any commercial building uh, does require some network installations. Before there was a building, it couldn't function if it didn't have proper plumbing, it didn't have proper electrical installation, proper millwork or whatnot. Now a commercial building cannot function without a computer network. Didn't take many years for that thing to happen. Uh, so what do we see here? POS, that stands for point of sale. It's a cash register. Well, what's a cash register? Well, it's, it's, it's a different shape, but it is a PC, right? And it has a network connection. Network connection has to be connected somewhere. What do we do? We have to install a wire. Somebody has to do it. A lot of business in this, in this area here. How many POSs can we see here? Well, there's one, there's one, there's one. A uh, bunch of them over there. And then uh, aside from that, there will be wireless access points. Oh, there's a camera here that has to be installed. So, uh, well, yeah, it's, uh, it, I don't want to say we use the word lucrative business, but, uh, but you can make yourself a really comfortable life uh, if, uh, if you get just into that telecommunication, if this is something that appeals to you. All right. All right, so that was the last slide, and I had some references there because I had to put them because I was using some pictures from the internet and so on. Right? Yes, churches pay money; uh, they do um, because it's the right thing to do. If somebody works for you, you pay them money. Right? Uh, so yeah, um, cool. Now I'm going to see you in the in the lab sessions. And if you have any questions about anything, by all means, drop me an email and I'm beginning to talk too much saying goodbye. So I'm just going to say, I'll see you when I see you. Thank you guys. You're wonderful, but not as wonderful as I am. <laughs> all right, great to see you guys. Let's have a good trip. <laughs>